Our beautiful blue planet is in peril. As global temperatures rise due to human-caused climate change, so too do the oceans. Vast amounts of water trapped in ice sheets and glaciers across the globe are melting rapidly into the sea. The latest projections show that in the coming decades, sea levels could rise by as much as two meters by the year 2100. That may not sound like much, but it would be absolutely devastating for humanity. Imagine waking up one day to find the world's coastlines radically transformed. Entire cities, home to millions of people, are partially or fully underwater. Places we know and love are gone. But how could such a thing happen? And what would a two-meter sea level rise really look like? Let's take a dive under the waves of the not-so-distant future. First, major coastal cities across the world would be utterly transformed by the rising tides. New York, Mumbai, Shanghai, Tokyo are all home to tens of millions of people and trillions of dollars in infrastructure. With a two-meter rise, large areas would be flooded and buildings damaged. Iconic landmarks are lost forever beneath the waves. The Brooklyn Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, and the Gateway of India, all underwater. Millions forced to abandon their homes and livelihoods. The scale of human suffering would be immense, and the flooding wouldn't stop with a single surge. On top of higher sea levels, devastating storm surges fueled by climate change would roll in and wreak havoc. Hurricane Sandy gave New York a glimpse of this future in 2012, but a two-meter rise would make Sandy seem mild by comparison. Each year, more powerful storms would ravage the coasts, eroding land and chewing up infrastructure. Life in the world's great coastal cities would become a battle against the rising tides. While the rich cities may have some resources to adapt, what about the small island nations of the Pacific and Caribbean? For them, a two-meter rise would not mean inconvenience. It would mean annihilation. There are dozens of small island countries that barely peek out above the waves as it is. Places like Tuvalu, Maldives, Marshall Islands. For these remote island paradises, a two-meter rise wouldn't just flood homes, it would completely submerge entire countries. Imagine living on one of these postcard-perfect islands, your people's home for thousands of years. Then, in a matter of decades, the entire land disappears into the sea forever. Your nation was wiped off the map. An ancient culture and society vanished like it was never there. This heartbreaking scenario would play out across many Pacific and Caribbean islands, entire unique languages and ways of life lost. For island peoples, climate change really could mean the end of their world. Beyond flooded cities and lost cultures, a two-meter sea level rise would threaten one of humanity's most basic needs, food. Vast areas of fertile agricultural land around the world would be lost, either directly flooded by the rising seas or ruined by salt contamination of groundwater. Major rice-growing river deltas across Asia would see farmland turn to ocean. In Egypt, much of the Nile Delta which produces ample wheat and vegetables, would disappear underwater. Even inland, the spreading seawater would seep into and salinate groundwater aquifers used for irrigating crops. Food production would plummet. With billions more mouths to feed, food prices would skyrocket, leaving the world's poorest unable to afford basic staples like bread or rice. Food riots and famine would spread. Are you prepared to pay $20 for a loaf of bread? In this nightmare scenario of a two-meter sea level rise that could become a grim reality for many. But why exactly is the sea level rising? Let's ask Ben Hamlington, who is a research scientist in the sea level and ice group in the Earth Sciences section at NASA. So on global scale, sea level is rising really because of our warming climate. There's two main factors causing sea level to change. The first is what we call thermal expansion. So as more heat gets trapped by the atmosphere, a lot of that heat gets absorbed by the ocean. When water warms, it actually expands and that causes sea level to go up. The other reason that sea level is rising is because of melting ice. So we have a lot of ice contained in the ice sheets, the Antarctic Greenland ice sheets, and different mountain regions. As the earth warms, these regions are also warming. 
So what happens is this ice melts, and when it melts, that meltwater flows into the ocean. So again, this causes sea level to go up. On regional scales, the rates of sea level rise can actually be quite different. The ocean doesn't feel like a bathtub. Different parts of the ocean see more of an effect than others, depending on two main factors. The first of these is something we call ocean dynamics. So as the climate changes, there can be changes in our ocean circulation in the currents. And this actually changes how water is distributed and moved about the earth, causing sea level to be different in some locations than others. The other reason that we see differences in the rates from one region to the next is something we call the ice sheet fingerprints. So there's so much ice being lost from these different locations from the ice sheets that it actually affects the gravity and rotation of the earth. And we have these distinct what we call fingerprints that really dictate where the water goes when it melts. So some parts of the world will see more of an effect from some locations than others and that can really cause changes in the amount of sea level rise that we see. In sum, why is sea level rising? Sea level is rising really because of our warming climate. Now that you heard the expert and know why the sea level is rising, let's get back to discussing the consequences. If submerged and salinated farmland wasn't bad enough, a warmer world with higher seas would bring more ferocious weather. Megastorms charged up by climate change would become commonplace. And with higher baseline sea levels, the storm surges would ride in on even mightier waves, causing horrific damage. Coastal farms would see their crops thrashed, Food distribution networks are crippled by battering winds and floods. Millions were left starving in the wake of the receding waters. The costs to life and property would be astronomical. We're already seeing the impact of climate-intensified storms today. But a two-meter sea level rise would put them on steroids. Hurricane Katrina cost over $100 billion in damages in 2005. A Katrina-like storm in a world with two-meter higher seas could inflict twice, maybe three times as much damage. Where would the money come from to rebuild after each devastating blow? Coastal cities and nations would be bankrupted over and over. Our kids would grow up in a world of ever stronger storms, not sure if their homes would still be there after the next one hits. For them, living along the coast could become a terrifying way of life. But many won't have the luxury of staying put and braving the storms. With endless miles of coastline flooded or storm-battered, there would be an exodus of refugees like we've never seen. If the oceans rise two meters, most of their homes and villages would be chronically flooded or repeatedly destroyed by storms. They would have no choice but to flee inland, seeking habitable land and safety. This massive population of climate refugees would place immense strain on inland areas. Crowding, shortages, unemployment, disease. Tensions would boil over into conflict as people compete over scarce resources. Borders would close to migrants. Ethnic violence could explode in the powder keg conditions. The social and political consequences of this mass uprooting of humanity would be enormous. But with the rising seas displacing billions, what alternative would they have? The dire impacts would ripple through every facet of civilization. This is the ominous future we could face if climate change accelerates and two meters of sea level rise inundates our coastal cities and farmlands. But the story doesn't have to end this way. If humanity acts decisively now to halt global warming, the oceans will only rise subtly giving us time to adapt. But the window of opportunity is fast closing. We must get serious about climate action today to avoid the coastal dystopia of tomorrow. Our children's future hangs in the balance. What's it going to be? Hope or despair? The choice is ours. The financial loss would be so massive that the entire world economy could face a recession. Jobs lost, savings wiped out, and poverty widespread. This is a pivotal moment for humanity. We each have a role to play to steer away from climate catastrophe. Talk to your family and friends and spread awareness through your community. We can avoid this dark timeline, but the window is closing fast. Together, our voices are strong. Together, we can keep climate change at bay and protect this beautiful planet we call home. But we have to start today. Be the change for the world you want to see. Our future is still unwritten. Let's write a happy ending, where rising seas don't drown our dreams. The power is in our hands.